So I think I'm gonna take the plunge and tinker around with Warhammer Quest, the uh, dungeon crawl board game published by Games Workshop back in 1995. This is a classic. There are several channels that have covered Warhammer Quest and what makes Warhammer Quest special and how it fits into dungeon crawl board game history. So I'm not gonna beat a dead horse and, and get into the history of this game. But what I do wanna do is play around with it uh, because I've been researching a lot of dungeon crawl board games over the last few months as I attempt to build my own dungeon crawl board game. And this is a game that I haven't spent much time with. And I finally downloaded the rule book a few days ago and started thumbing through it. And the more I read the rule book, the more of an interest I took in the game and realized that the game I'm building is actually quite similar to this game. And I think because it's out of print and it's so hard to find and it's so expensive, I never really considered uh, taking a look at it or spending time with it. But now that I've had some time to spend with the rule book and I've been able to find some scans online of the components that come with this game, uh, like the map tiles and the card decks, and I'm starting to get my wrap my brain around what it would take to build this game, and I think I think I can do it. Um, relatively painlessly, and I think it's a worthy experiment because if if I really want to complete my research, my thesis into dungeon crawl board games, I think this is a game that I really have to spend some time with. So that's my goal for this little weekend project. It's not too hard to find PDFs with the artwork for this game online. I did not have to do a deep search. I just did a very generic Google search and came up with some first page results and found some PDFs from those results. These scans are not great. Uh, they're pretty washed out. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna capture each page of these PDFs as Photoshop documents, clean them up, do some color processing. And so this is a scan of one of the map tiles. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty washed out. So the first thing I do is like image auto contrast and that just sharpens everything up. And then sometimes I do an auto tone and see if that helps. Uh, in this particular case, I think it helped the color a little bit to do an auto tone. And so now I have my tile, it's all cleaned up. Nice Photoshop document version of that tile. And what I've been doing is I've got this master file that I've been creating uh, with all the tiles that I clean up and scaled it to the size that I want to print these at. And uh, we've got square tiles here, passages. And so it took me, you know, I don't know, a couple hours to go through and process all these images. I actually kind of like image processing, so I, I've never considered this to be a bummer to have to do this. Uh, there, I found asset lists online that, that break down exactly how many of each tile type there are. So that's how I figured out um, how to set all this up and how many of each I need to print out. So I'm gonna print out the tiles on regular printer paper and then I'm gonna mount them on chipboard. And then for the cards, I basically uh, did the same thing. I opened up each card, I put them into a master file. So like these are the dungeon cards. I'm gonna print the cards out on Bristol board. So I've, I'm using like a big pad of Bristol board so my card document is bigger and I'll be able to print out more cards on a single sheet. So like this is the backs of the cards and this is the front of the cards. These are the dungeon cards. So I'm just setting these cards up to print out of the rear feed. Um, card stock, landscape, 11 by 14 inches. Uh, I should have put guide marks. 
So these printed out pretty good and the fonts are pretty readable, but I should put some guide marks on when I print out the back side. All right, so I'm flying pretty fast and loose with this. I just kind of want to see how it turns out. If it doesn't work, um, I'll just try something else. I'm just seeing how well it looks like they it looks like they lined up decently. Yeah, I think it's gonna work out pretty good. So these are turning out pretty good. I think I have like a system now. But this is just kind of a personal side project. So now I'm just printing out the map tiles that I processed in Photoshop. And, but these print out pretty easily. They're single sided, so there's no weird registration issues. And I'm just cranking them out. Printing the objective rooms first. And then I'm cropping a lot of the white space off of these. When I go to mount these on chipboard, I'm not wasting a bunch of spray adhesive and I'm not wasting a bunch of chipboard. Um, but I left a little bit of white space so that I can do my final trim and get it nice and perfect against this black edge. I really like the Warhammer Quest tile art. I think it's really nice and it's inspirational. I like the way the artist sort of captured 3D effects of stairs and shadow. I did a little bit of that with my board game, but I didn't take it nearly as far. And these feel a little Photoshoppy, um, but not necessarily in a bad way. I think I think it all reads quite nicely. If I had one complaint, it's that they're like the color schemes are kind of all over the place with this tile set. Maybe all the random colors really help this thing pop at the table. So these are the objective rooms. I should be working on my game right now, not building my hack of Warhammer Quest, but the truth is I'm just totally fried. My brain is fried. I need a break. <laughs> and uh, this probably doesn't seem relaxing, but it kind of is. I, f I find like mindless Photoshop work and mindless crafting to be kind of relaxing. I don't really have to make a lot of decisions when I do this. I can just Kind of go on autopilot, build something really cool, and uh, yeah, so I think these square tiles, I'm going to mount them on chipboard but before I do that final cut across the middle. I think it'll just be easier to get everything registered properly. This is going really, really quickly, by the way. I mean, I've, I've kind of got an assembly line going here. I'm printing out one page as I trim the, the other, and I've only spent 20 minutes printing and cutting these assets, and I've got almost all the tiles printed, and with their initial trims, I still have to mount them on chipboard, which I'll probably do tomorrow because it's dark, and I need to do that outside. Um, but that'll take another 20 minutes probably. Really the Photoshop processing probably took the longest, but the, the, the building the assets is going very, very quickly. All right, so we're in day two of building Warhammer Quest. I uh, probably got maybe two or three hours into this project at this point. And I've got all the cards processed in Photoshop basically just printing out these large 
sheets of cards. And then I'm just corner clipping to give them kind of a nicer, more factory feel. Obviously, there's not always the exact number of cards that I want for each page. So, for instance, I have this page here where I was able to put the rest of the treasure cards on it, the rest of the dungeon cards on it that wouldn't fit on the dungeon card page, and then the one event that wouldn't fit on the events page. So this is kind of a catch-all page that pretty much covers all the rest. And then, as you can see, it's double-sided here. Uh, I've got the little trim marks on this side, no trim marks on this side, so I'll do all my cutting from the card back side. I'm about ready to cut out the other half of the treasure cards. Now, there's a bit of deduction that has to occur to figure out exactly what you need to print and how many of each card you need to print. Um, the asset files that I found, like the PDF of the, of the map tiles, it, it's got a lot of map tiles in it. And I think some of those tiles are from the expansions. Um, and it takes a while to figure out like, oh, okay, those tiles are not part of the base game. Uh, those cards are not part of the base game. Those are part of the treasure pack. So I think I have all of the cards for Warhammer Quest printed now. Uh, I've got the dungeon cards, the event cards, the treasure cards, and the spell cards. And I think the next step is gonna be mounting these dungeon tiles, these map tiles on chipboard and cutting them out Now, if I really wanted to do this up, I would spray some, maybe several coats of crystal clear on top of this to seal it and give it a bit of a sheen. But it's just one of those things like, do I really want to spend the time? It is totally possible to clear coat these after I cut them, but it would. I think it would actually be easier to do it before I cut them. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I think um, these tiles are looking pretty good. And I know from building these types of tiles before that they're fairly durable. And working on something like this has just been a huge relief. I think one of the hardest parts about building my own game has just been decision fatigue. Just being exhausted with the endless number of decisions I have to make about the game all the time. And then trying to be critical and objective about my own work. And that's tough. And then trying to figure out how to cor correct stuff that's not right. Sometimes getting some feedback is super helpful and other times I just have to like push through and go on this journey and hopefully come out the other end. It's getting hot. It's February, it's like almost summer, 80 degrees. So I think this is it. If I interpreted all the random asset lists correctly that I found online 
And if I cross-referenced them all and figured out how many corridors I needed and got rid of all the tiles that don't come in the core set, I think this is it. I think this is a complete set of tiles for the core box game of Warhammer Quest. I don't think I'm going to play this game until I ship, until after I ship my board game. I think playing Warhammer Quest is going to be my reward for shipping my Dungeon Crawl board game. Uh, I haven't really played any games in months because I've been working so hard on my own game and playtesting my own game. And I think as a reward for finishing my project, I'm going to... I'm going to get some minis rounded up for this game and play through a campaign of uh, Warhammer Quest from 1995. So now I'm just printing out the rule book and the adventure book. I uh, just printed out the rule book on 11 by 17 and then I'm using my long arm stapler to staple it and then I trimmed it down just to get rid of some of the white space, make it a little smaller. I can never tell if like if this was if these are scans from the actual rule book or if somebody went through and and re-edited the rule book because I don't know I don't know what the actual rule book looked like. I've never seen an actual copy of the game, but this stuff just looks like it's been re done by someone. But this game is from 1995, so maybe maybe it was just like that. <laughs> it's so hard to tell. This rule book could be formatted to be both smaller and have a larger font because there's just a ton of white space. Um, so now I have the adventure book, 16 pages, and the rule book, 32 pages. I'm probably not going to print out the role-playing book. Uh, it's a couple hundred pages, and it's kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do with this print-and-play project. But it looks fun. I'd like to read it someday. I've got my rule books. I've got all the map tiles. I've got all the cards for the game. I also printed out this one sheet uh, on how to play the game. This guy, Universal Head, I think. Yeah, universalhead.com. This guy... This guy comes up with like one page instruction sheets for fairly complex games. Uh, and I really, I like it. So I printed that out just so I have like cliff notes for the game. And then here I have this asset list. So I just want to figure out what I've finished and what I still need to do. So the big missing components now are doorways, dice, miniatures or standees and then these markers and counters and then the warrior cards so there's still quite a bit left to build so i think that's going to do it for part one of building my own pack of warhammer quest from 1995 and i'm going to get back to working on my game but i'm going to come back to this i'm going to build the counters I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do about miniatures. And I need to wrangle up the warrior cards. I think after I hit like a milestone with my game, like finishing the rule book and finish the scenario book, once I get to like beta test and other people are play testing the game, then maybe I'll come back, do a part two video, finish up my own home build of Warhammer Quest but I'm still going to wait to play it until after I ship my game. So this is definitely going to be a reward. Playing this build of Warhammer Quest is going to be my reward to myself for finishing and shipping my own Dungeon Crawl board game, which I'm starting to realize is very similar to this game. <laughs> so stay tuned.